So, Mick, you wanted to uh, to talk about the election? Yeah, yeah. I think it's really important to talk about the election. Uh, I think it's important for everyone to have a moment where enough's enough. I mean, for me, enough was enough eight years ago. Uh, the Undertaker is correct in saying Donald Trump made politics fun again. You've made politics fun again. For about three weeks in 2016. But it's eight years later and there's absolutely nothing fun about this man. To me, there's nothing fun about a man who could be the next president of the United States talking about the enemy within, making it clear that this was not a mistake. This is his go-to line, the enemy within, the enemy within, the enemy within. It's the enemy from within. The enemy from within. I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within, not even the people that have come in. Which he co-opted uh, from uh, Senator Joseph McCarthy, one of the worst people to ever grace our planet. What frustrates me the most is that so many good, hardworking American people cannot see through such an obvious con man who, who is only out for himself. The idea that the working man thinks this guy is behind them has obviously not looked into his past. I know people work hard. They don't always have time to go home and do their research. But instead of tuning into your favorite news station of choice, look up the data. See how many times Donald Trump has failed to pay his contractors and workers over the last 30 years. It's in the hundreds. He claims it's because they didn't do good work. This coming from a guy who claims he only hires the best people. I claim he's screwing over the working man. Kevin Nash today told me a story about going into the uh, venue that used to be the Taj Mahal, mentioning Trump's name and seeing the bartender roll his eyes. And the bartender told a story about his father. His father was an electrical contractor, worked hard his whole life to build up that business. And then when Trump did not pay him for the work he did in the Taj Mahal, and the man was unable to fight it because he didn't have the resources to fight it. Trump knows that the people, honest, hardworking contractors, don't have the resources to fight him in court. And he bankrupts them. And their dreams disappear. That's not standing up for the working man. Words are cheap, and he lies almost every time he opens his mouth. But do you know what he's not lying about? When he talks about coming after the enemy within. The enemy within. Who is that? It could be anyone. It could be me. An article came out today in NPR, October 22nd, 2024, with a study that showed Donald Trump had issued over 100 threats to people he perceived as his political rivals. He has threatened to impeach and prosecute Kamala Harris. He accused Barack Obama of treason. He said his chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Staff Mark Milley, General Mark Milley, should be executed. He did nothing to stop what could have been the death of Mike Pence, his own vice president. Crowd chants, hang Mike Pence. There's a hangman's noose outside. And now he's gone so far as to say that anyone who criticizes the Supreme Court and other judges should be put in jail. So, Donald Trump, I'd like to talk directly to you. Are you going to put me in jail for criticizing your Supreme Court? Because I think Clarence Thomas is a disgrace to the Supreme Court. I think Samuel Alito is a horrible person who doesn't belong on the highest court in the land. I don't think Brett Kavanaugh's interview in front of the Senate would have landed him a job as a dishwasher, let alone serving in the Supreme Court for life. I mean, I'm so scared that I was thinking about calling you a douchebag in this interview. And then I thought, that's a pretty strong word. Trump might come after me. And I made the decision not to call you a douchebag, even though you are one. Vote for Kamala Harris.